Now, team, keep it clean. I ain't trying to get nobody too hyped up now. But the fact that we do have a legitimate shot. That is very exciting news. Now, before you get into it, I got to say, I thank you all for subscribing to the channel. Continue to subscribe to the channel. Let's all keep growing. Team, keep it clean as a family. So subscribe, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton, a whole lot. It really, really, really does. Now, something else that could help out the Baltimore Ravens uh, would be if they added another tight end. And Zach Ertz, Zach Ertz, former Philadelphia Eagle, former Arizona Cardinal, he requested and asked for, probably might have even begged for, who knows. But he told the Cardinals, like, look, Cardinals, please let me go. It just ain't working out. Uh, I want to go in my career on a brighter note, on a lighter note, on a much better note. I want to play for a different bird than you. Uh, and the Cardinals, they thought about it. And they said, you know what? There you go, Zach. T take your leave. You're out of here, buddy. So they, they released him, and he had to clear through waivers. Now, this is where it sort of got tricky because 31 teams would have to not put in a, a claim form in order for him to become a free agent to where he could sign wherever he wanted to. That happened. So now, apparently, he wants to play for a contender. And for the four contenders that actually want him to play for them are uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Buffalo Bills. I don't know if I would consider them a contender right now. But anyway... And the fourth team, the Baltimore Ravens. So Jordan Schultz reported this. He reported that the Baltimore Ravens are actually interested in Zach Ertz. So I like that, Ravens. I like that for several different reasons, and we discussed some of them already, but we'll reiterate them again. One of them is because of his experience. Zach Ertz is a, a multiple pro bowler, um, and more importantly than a pro bowl, he's a Super Bowl champion. He was on that Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl winning team uh so a few years back so him being able to bring even more super bowl experience to the baltimore ravens you can never have enough of that ravens currently right now they got uh john harbaugh of course super bowl winning head coach they got justin tucker who was a part of the super bowl uh they have odell beckham jr they have nelson Aguilar. so they got some guys that have already won super bowls on the team right now but it certainly couldn't hurt to add one more. Now, Jordan Schultz, when he was doing this report, because he was speaking about it on Bleacher Report, and he was breaking down how Zach Ertz would fit with all these different teams, and when he got to the Baltimore Ravens, he said, this is the one that makes the most sense. Because with the Baltimore Ravens, them having just lost uh, Mark Andrews, unfortunately, and, and there's that chance that he could come back later on if the Baltimore Ravens make a deep uh, postseason run, which I fully expect them to. Uh, my status on the Baltimore Ravens didn't change from the beginning of the season because I said the only thing that I feel could get in the way of the Baltimore Ravens in the Super Bowl would be health. And they are a pretty healthy team. They have took some significant blows. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. But anyway, uh, Jordan Schultz, he was saying that they make the most sense because they just lost Mark Andrews. And he said they got Isaiah Likely, who they really like, second-year tight end out of Coastal Carolina, and they got Charlie Kohler too. Uh, but if you add a Zach Ertz to that, you could have somebody who has that experience over those guys and and now like with the postseason on the horizon it was, it's coming up really really fast because this season is just it's flying by uh he says zach Ertz would be a really really good fit and i'm like hey jordan i was saying the same thing i agree buddy so i, I just feel like the, the ravens have a legitimate shot now it has been said that philly they are interested in bringing him back as well, we know Zach Ertz, he loved Philly. He was crying when he left Philly. He, he really wanted to always be a part of Philly. And, I mean, he will always be a part of the Philadelphia Eagles because he got a Super Bowl there. And he, he scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl. So he certainly was a legitimate helper. Uh, something else that Jordan Schultz was talking about would be uh, Zach Ertz's role. He talked about how Zach Ertz right now, with him being a free agent, not having to be on waivers anymore, but him being a completely free agent. He said he's going to take his time. He said he does not expect anything to happen over the weekend. So Ravens fans, we could chill for a little bit. And he said maybe on Monday, Tuesday next week, then he may uh, stuff may start heating up a bit for him. And he may start getting closer to making whatever his decision is going to be. Um, but he talked about how Zach Ertz, he just wants to have a significant enough role. Doesn't necessarily even have to be a starter, but where he goes could depend on what type of role they have for him. Now, uh, with us, with the Baltimore Ravens, what type of role could Zach Ertz have if he joined the team? Well, um, would he be a starter? Would I expect him to be a starter? No. I, and I, I don't think that's a realistic expectation. 
expecting somebody who was just like just released from that team. We going into a week week 14? We if we going into week 13, 14. I, I cannot expect it. Oh yeah, they just, he just he just got released. Raven just signed him. Oh yeah, he gonna be a starter right away. No, uh, uh-uh, no. But as the season goes along, to have him to have that veteran there, that could help that tight end room that much more, and that could instill some more confidence in them too. And another thing as well, as us Ravens fans know more than anybody, stay ready so you ain't gotta do what. Get ready. You see how the Ravens did the wide receiver room this offseason? You see how they did it? They already had Devin Duvernay. They had Rashad Bateman. They had Tylen Wallace. Uh, but what did they do? They said, you know what? It's not enough. We're going to add more. So they signed Nelson Aguilar. And we was thinking, okay, that might be a wrap. Then they signed Odell Beckham Jr. And we was thinking, okay, that might be a wrap. Then they drafted Zay Flowers. So the way that they attacked the wide receiver room, because we know injuries happen. We know some people will be out, unfortunately. And that's exactly what happened. Some people ended up being out at different points in time. But guess what? Since the Baltimore Ravens prepared themselves this offseason at wide receiver, when they missed an Odell Beckham Jr., when they had games without Rashad Bateman, they still had guys that could come in and play, and they were ready. They were prepared. So now that Mark Andrews is out, we, of course, nobody ever planned for Mark Andrews to be out because Mark Andrews has just really been legitimately healthy throughout his career. But it's like, all right, you drafted not one but two tight ends last year. All right, cool. But now he's out for the foreseeable future. You got Isaiah Likely, you got Charlie Kohler. They can do their thing, but we got to think. Again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. And you don't want to necessarily think like this, but as a business, as a franchise, as a football team, you got to think like this, especially as a Baltimore Ravens. What happens if something would have happened to one of those guys? I wouldn't expect it to, but hey, you, you never know. And if you could bring in another tight end, like a, a Pro Bowl tight end, a veteran tight end, that could help just have that room staying ready so they ain't got to get ready. I take you to outside linebacker. Outside linebacker this year, it was expected to be David Ajabo, Adafe Away, Tyus Bowser. They drafted Trent Simpson as well. So it was looking like, all right, hey, okay, we got some young boys in that, in that outside linebacker room. We're going to be able to mix and match. It's going to be nice. And now you look at the Baltimore Ravens' primary outside linebackers, outside linebackers, DN, whatever you want to call them. It's Jadavian Clowney and Kyle Vinoy, two people who were not on the roster uh, from jump. So they had to go out and get those guys. They added those guys to the team. So, And you see how much of an impact they've had on the Baltimore Ravens. And, and a lot of people wrote both of them off, not just Jadavian Clowney, because we've continued to talk about how a lot of people, they, they, they wrote off Jadavian Clowney. But a lot of people did the same thing with Kyle Vinoy. Nobody expected him to be doing what he's doing with the Baltimore Ravens. But both of those two have been amazing, and they have both been integral parts of the Baltimore Ravens defense. And they haven't just been role players. Oh, they actually been – well, they are role players, but they have a legitimate role. They're not backups. They're not filling guys. No, those guys are playmakers for the Baltimore Ravens. So with Zach Ertz – I just feel like it, it would be sort of the same thing as it is with a Jadavian Clowney and a Kyle Vinoy. As it is the same way they did it with Odell Beckham Jr. and Nelson Aguilar. Somebody that could come in at a position where the Ravens are pretty young yet, um, but they lack a bit of experience. So you bring in those guys that have that experience, that have been playing in the NFL, that know what it takes to get the job done, and that could make your team that much better and now the thing about it too what makes the, this even better even sweeter for the Baltimore Ravens this situation even though it makes it sweeter for everybody else who will be interested in Zach Ertz as well you can come up with your own contract you don't have to go by the contract that he had with the Cardinals because he's going to get his money from them since he cleared waivers the Cardinals will pay him that 2.5 mil if somebody were to claim him if they would have claimed him on a waiver wire then they would have had to pick up that 2.5 mil. But since he cleared waivers, Cardinals are responsible for that. So he's getting that bread regardless. If he gets picked up by a team or not, he is getting paid by Arizona. But now, since he's a free agent, he can sign wherever he wants to, whenever he wants to. As a Baltimore Ravens, you can sign him to the contract of your choosing. 
It doesn't have to be what they had, what the type of deal that they had lined up with. No, you get to choose it. So that makes it that much sweeter for you. But at the same time, that does make the competition that much tougher. Because while the Baltimore Ravens can sign Zach Ertz to whatever type of contract they want to, so can the 30 other teams. And the reason we say 30 other teams is because we got to exclude the Arizona Cardinals because they're obviously not going to re-sign him. But then uh, a lot of other teams that may be interested in Zach Ertz, they eliminated because it was said that he wants to play for a contender. So you look at the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> they are obviously a contender. They only lost one game. And wasn't it to the Jets? That's crazy. But anyway, they only lost one game. Uh, that's his home. He knows the offense. He knows the quarterback. Very familiar with the team. Knows the staff. Knows everybody there. So I would give them the advantage when it comes to signing a Zach Ertz. Um, and, and then they talked about how with Dallas Goddard, he, he had been out for a while. So he'd been dealing with injuries. So he could come in and, and go do his thing over there. So it would be a maybe even a seamless transition if he were to go from the Cardinals to the Eagles. But, but then there's the Baltimore Ravens. So while I do feel like Philly has the leg up on Baltimore Ravens when it comes to that advantage of, of having not only being interested in Zach Ertz, but Zach Ertz being interested in them with the Baltimore Ravens, obviously a contender as well. But less familiarity that he has with the Baltimore Ravens. He would have to come in and learn the playbook. It would have to happen over time. Um, but I think that they could certainly carve out a role for him in the offense as a tight end. Um, he could help out in the red zone. He could help out on third downs. He could just help out in the room. He could help teach Isaiah. And I'm sure they're learning plenty from Mark Andrews. Because, again, when you got somebody like a Mark Andrews in a building, you just watch what he does, and you're like, oh, my God, how did you do that, Mark? How did you do that, man, Andrews? So I'm sure he putting Isaiah Likely in Cole on game. Uh, but it wouldn't hurt to have even more game. So let's see if the Baltimore Ravens decide, you know what? Zach Ertz, we bringing him in now. Now, while I would love for them to bring in Zach Ertz, I, I wouldn't be mad at it at all. If they don't bring in Zach Ertz, I do not believe that will make or break the season. Uh, I still do believe with or without Zach Ertz, the Baltimore Ravens are a Super Bowl team. Um, but with a Zach Ertz, that just makes you that much stronger. That makes you that much pro more prepared. And like we always say, stay ready so you ain't got to do what? Get ready.